Kyle Adams runs the highly prestigious Flat Earth Institute of Science. I'm kidding, of course, it's not prestigious. And he has produced many, many videos uh, on what he calls globe science. We looked at one before regarding the distance to the moon. Who remembers that one? All right, now here our light bulb is really close to the sheet. Now we're gonna go ahead and move it away from the sheet and look for the difference. Well, he is back and today he is adamant that lunar eclipses don't prove the globe. Oh boy. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, I want to say a massive thank you to the sponsors of today's Flat Earth Friday, Vite Ramen. Now, unfortunately, the good people at Vite Ramen uh, gave me a gif of their founder and CEO, Tim, dancing in some giant cat claws in front of a watermelon instead of a script. So I'm doing this one on the fly, and it comes with a bit of a story. Now, Tim loved ramen, made them all the time in his youth, but he realized they weren't exactly the healthiest option. And sooner rather than later, he'd end up with some problems down the line. So Tim went all out to make the best possible ramen he could, packed full of protein with all the nutrition you might need. Now, not just that, but he founded the whole business on the principle of people over profit. It's nice, isn't it? Oh. Personally, I'm all in on this roasted soy sauce chicken flavour. They're bloody delicious and full of flavour too. Plus, you've just seen how easy they are to make. Click the link below to get a bundle that gives you free gifts and free shipping in the contiguous USA. And don't forget to use my code SIMANDAN at checkout to get an additional 10% off. That's viteramen.com slash SIMANDAN or click the link and use the code SIMANDAN. Right, back to today's video, which as I said at the start is from the Flat Earth Institute of Science founder, Kyle Adams. Now he wants to poo poo lunar eclipses as a globe earth proof. Here we go. Many globe earthers love to point out lunar eclipses and act as if they were solid proof that the earth is a globe. The problem is they don't prove it's a globe. Do you know how many flat earthers have said that, Carl? So, so many. Let me show you. Here I have a ball and I'm going to cast the shadow of this ball onto another ball. All right. Look carefully at the shape of that shadow. Kyle, Kyle, you are using two balls that are roughly the same size. The distance between the two balls is not to scale. How far away is your light source? None of it is to scale. So why would we see here what we usually see during a lunar eclipse if none of it's to scale? Now here's the shadow of a ball being cast onto a plate. And please take notice of how the shadow is different here. Yes, well done. The curved shadow is cast onto a flat surface, so it looks curved. But that really doesn't prove anything because again, it's not to scale. In fact, I would postulate that the shadow cast on your basketball was straight because your blocking ball was relatively close to that basketball and the curved surface of that basketball deformed the shadow. Here's the shadow on a ball. Shadow on the plate. Now here is a picture of a lunar eclipse. Hmm, I don't know about you, but I think this presents a problem for the globe Earth model. No, in no way does it present a problem for the globe Earth model, because your experiment was not to scale. 
What's happening in that case is that the sun is on one side of the Earth. The Earth is in the middle, and it's casting a shadow. The Earth is casting a shadow on the moon. And as the shadow moves across the moon, you'll notice that the shadow is curved, it's round. So something like the sun that's bigger than the Earth and is able to cast a shadow of the Earth on the moon can actually show you the shape of the Earth. Yeah, that's definitely a problem for the globe Earth model. Oh, is it Kyle? Was your light source considerably larger than the blocking object? Was it the correct distance away? No, no it wasn't. But every now and then cast a shadow on the moon. And when it did, that shadow was always round. Now the only shape we know of that always casts a round shadow is a ball. Wow, really Bill? You had to project a flat image of the moon onto the wall in order to get your round shadow? And uh, let's not get started on the size of your shadow there. Get out, Kyle. How can you mock his setup after the state of your presentation? But what was that you just said? Now the only shape we know of that always casts a round shadow is a ball. The only shape that can cast a shadow that's curved from any direction you put the light is a sphere. Oh no, not you too! Not today, doctors. Not today. Well, that doesn't dispute anything either. They said that the only shape that can cast a round shadow is a sphere. To prove them wrong, you would need to find another shape other than a sphere which casts a round shadow. Please notice how that shadow appeared flat the entire time it moved across the surface of the ball. Now this leaves the question, why do we see so many curved shadows across the face of the moon? Because the Earth is round and the shadow that is cast by the Earth is also round. Does this mean the moon is actually flat? I suppose that is one explanation for this. But I don't think it's the shadow of the Earth being cast on the moon here. Oh, here we go. A revelation coming up here from Kyle. I think something else is going on. The shadow of the Earth is not the only thing that could cause the moon to turn dark. What if this has to do with some kind of a filter that comes between the Earth and the Moon? A filter? And who in the blue blazers put that up there? A little while back, I had the opportunity to interview Cami Nodell, and she taught me some really fascinating facts about the atmosphere that I was totally unaware of before. Cami Nodell? Any relation? A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. She taught me about how the atmosphere acts as a filter and polarizes the light that passes through it. Things that people don't understand about that happen in reality, things that we should be looking the at. Yeah. The yeah. atmosphere um, polarizes any electric field, polarizes light, any um, light that's polarized, distractionalized, polarized filters, crossing, you know, have different effects. Um, and you know how I'm always on the hunt for common ground. Here I found some common ground with Colorado State University, wherein they acknowledge the fact that the light from the sun gets polarized as it passes through the atmosphere. And they further claim that bees actually depend on this polarization for navigation. Okay, fine, but what has this got to do with lunar eclipses? That is pretty wild and mind-blowing if you ask me. Pretty cool, right? Animals are awesome. No argument from me there. As I understand it, magnetic fields are generally pretty round. And keep in mind, the moon has its own magnetic field, and magnetic fields can also polarize light. So what would happen if we were to look at this through round filters instead of rectangular ones?
As I understand it, magnetic fields are generally pretty round. And keep in mind, the moon has its own magnetic field, and magnetic fields can also polarize light. So what would happen if we were to look at this through round filters instead of rectangular ones? Ooh, yeah! Bada boom, bada bing! What in the name of Jimmy McGill was that? Ooh, yeah! Bada boom, bada bing! Dear, oh dear. The reason that this is a fader is that the moon has very, very little to no magnetic field to speak of. And you want to know what the most beautiful thing about this hypothesis is? It is easily testable. Just bring out a third filter and see if you can't bring the moon back into view during the next lunar eclipse. All it takes is a piece of tape. This phenomenon is one of the most mind-blowing things about polarized filters. But please know that this is not the only hypothesis of what else could be going on here. Brilliant, he's got more. Please keep in mind, refraction can also cause shadows to appear. While I do not currently know the exact cause of lunar eclipses, I know I can say with confidence that they are not caused by the shadow of the Earth. It's always the same with the Flat Earthers, every single time. I don't know the reason for this, but it's definitely not a globe. And I'm not just saying that because the shadow of a ball being cast onto another ball is a straight line. One very important vocabulary word that everyone interested in lunar eclipses should learn is the word selenelian. Oh, my days, it just gets so tiring. This is kind of an essential term for flat earthers to know. A selenelian is a lunar eclipse that takes place while the sun is visible. And this particular multiple exposure image was featured in the NBC News back in 2014. Though if you want to look up that particular lunar eclipse, the photo was actually taken in December of 2011. Anyway, according to the description here, this photo shows the setting moon just as the sun was about to rise. So the moon is going down in the west, and the sun is coming up behind the observer in the east. And please notice how the moon is being lit up from the bottom up. You have literally just said that refraction is a potential cause for an eclipse. Well, guess why we get selenely on eclipses? Your old buddy refraction. Atmospheric refraction causes astronomical objects to appear higher in the sky than, than they are in reality. So during a lunar eclipse, the sun and moon are only visible because of refraction, thereby making the selenelion eclipse possible. Happy? Now let's try and visualize how the mechanics of this would work in Dr. Thaler's globe Earth model. If we were to put the eclipsing moon in here, where should we put it? Should we put it here? That doesn't seem right. The moon here is setting and should be moving into the shadow. In which case, the light here appears to be on the wrong side. How about somewhere down here in the bottom half of the shadow? That looks a little better. The number one explanation I have heard globe earthers provide when trying to explain selenelians is that refraction is causing both the sun and the moon to be visible. That is some pretty extreme refraction if you ask me. Personal incredulity is not a reason to doubt it, Kyle. It's a massive planet with a massive atmosphere that acts like a giant lens. All I see from you, Kyle, is personal incredulity fueled lessons that try to dispute the globe. Honestly, Kyle, we all love a try, but come on. Flat Earth's dead. It's over. I think we're all pretty tired after this one. So let's call this one a day and say we are all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thank you so much for watching, it truly is appreciated. Uh, if you enjoyed it today, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, and if the feeling takes you, hit the bell notification as well. Haven't said that in a while. Uh, and of course, if you really enjoyed it, hit the like button too. I've been Simon and Dan, have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday for another one of those mud flood tours. Can't wait for that one. See you then.